Well, hello, YouTube buds. I hope you're doing well. I thought I would check in just to show you some art I have finished recently, and then the next one I am doing is sort of a show and tell thing, just practicing it as an artist. It's good to hear from different people how they do things, and so I will show a few things like that and talk about it. I do have some people that I only keep in touch with through YouTube, so that's one reason I like to upload a video now and then too. And you will see some things on my computer. So if you're a high tech person, which I'm not, I don't like, but I deal with it the way I can, I will show you some technology stuff and tips and tricks with that. So let's take a look first at something I finished a few weeks ago before I talk about what I'm doing now. My goal with this one was to repeat a drawing I had already done um, a year ago and to improve it. You will see what I did and how I improved it if you compare the two. So let's do that. Here is the original photo I got from Unsplash, which is um, a place you can go to get photos to use and the permission is built in to use them really. The tattoo what I was very happy with actually. The length is good from wrist to end of the hand where the fingers curl over but the width was off. So take a look at the new one and you can see much wider. Let's get the angle right. The hand is wider, and from a distance, it looks much better. And the shading is a bit better on them, too. Since I was doing it over, I thought, well, what's the opportunity to improve? I did add the side branches behind her loosely as like a stylistic form of, a, of dried plants, willows, really, willow branches. And I thought that was a good balance to put something to her left. Otherwise, it looked too empty. The lips are the same on the both versions. The nose is a little too, again, not wide enough. Made a huge improvement. The dress was greatly improved. Much more blended. I was able to use green again for a light black. Here, I attempted it here, and I thought, well, I like the idea. Green is a light black. You normally think gray would be a light black, but I was seeing some green in the original. It still is very time-consuming to do hair and to try and do it right. There are shapes of color. Work, get those shapes done and start filling them in. And reserve the strands, because hair will need strands. So you need to block out through careful drawing, really, with this color, how you are going to have some strands, because if you have all strands, it won't look right. If you have all shapes of color, it may look good, but it won't be realistic. After the background's done, you add the final touches of these wispy hairs going on the outside which add a huge extra step of realism. In my set, which is the Polychromos, Faber-Castell Polychromos, you have to um, use a lot of white with any of the candidates that could be skin color. One takeaway is that envision the color as 25% the color, the pigment, and then 75% white. You can go darker for the areas that are become in shadow, then you add different colors for the darker shadows. And the next one I'm currently working on, a very, very white skin, very bright white almost skin. This is even a finer application of the um, pigment and then even more white. And I will go darker when it's time to put on a bit more define this better, not just for makeup reasons, but a bit more defined like this one is. The eyebrows might need a little bit more work. If you go off photorealism, you really do have to consult with the person is, and say, 
I thought it would look better if the hair was slightly raised enough to see where the eyebrows were clearer. You couldn't see this one at all, and it just was like a bit too much. Raising it here and figuring out through a reference another source where the eyebrow starts and stops. For a commission, I would show this. I'd be comfortable showing this much and saying it's not done but a lot of the layers are getting close to being done and I would have one eye done. I'm not there yet ready to show them formally and to say, oh, this is like a, your halfway view of how things look and what do you think and get an idea of what they think. But the skin being naturally very light anyway, if you were to make a painting that it was just one whole block of white, You'd have to do that as a drawing rather than as a painting. But to make it a painting, how do you see more colors? In other words, how do you see the off-whites? And how do you get inspired to see them? There's an animal sneaking in. Uh-oh, who's that cat? I don't know who that is. What are you doing? I drew him. I drew that kitty. Yeah, sure. This is a photo of the photograph already is producing more color. This version is more colorful. More colors are coming out in the white. Do this in GIMP or Photoshop, but you can exaggerate what you are seeing and try to identify more colors. I could see some, but you could see more and get to that second version by going to your tools in Mac. I don't think you can do this on a PC, but um, in Photoshop or GIMP, you can do this. In a Mac, there are a couple tools, put in the drop down, adjust color, and then you get a window open up. And you can you should actually make a duplicate first so you can save it. So you duplicate it, it's called just duplicate, and on that duplicate you make these adjustments. Sepia doesn't do anything but make it more brown, and the color disappears into a brown. You've seen photos like that. So that starts at zero. The tint is actually, that's a red-green control. That doesn't help at all. Keep that in the middle. It's the temperature and saturation that will make a difference. You can increase the warmth or increase the coolness on the left side. The picture's already cool, and um, like the white is too ice blue white. So going cool does not help at all. Going warm does help. Cold, warm. All right. And then saturation is the key and you can all the way up all the way down is zero color the color helped me a bit to see the potential for colors to use a little bit easier like i said um you could always ask for a different photograph if you're an artist i felt that i could use this and keep going it's a little bit clearer to me that for the medium tone of the off-white, instead of just being white, this is what I call a melon color, M-E-L-O-N, which my set does not have. I was inventing it, which I've done before, and it's like a, it's like a very light orange. But if you use a light orange from the set and add white, it does not look right. It looks terrible. And so this is like the light orange you can create. And I use a red and a yellow, dark Naples yellow. And the red is Venetian red. It makes a nice orange that can be used for a medium tone. But if you add just a small amount, tiny bits of that color to the paper, I would say like 10% mix. And then white on top, you get a nice melon color. This color, cinnamon, in this set is exactly, almost, 
the color that I was inventing, which was not easy to invent, but it was like that light orange. I still need a lot of white with it. I was not disappointed with this because this will save me some time. But even if you didn't have this color, what I was doing already was fine. I just think this is very helpful and I pull it out from time to time and look at it. And then I have another sheet where you can see there's not a lot of blues on here. There may be none. I have a separate sheet where I was testing those. So I think what I will do next is um, I, will not, I would like to do some blending with the odorless mineral spirits. And then I will touch that up again. And I want to do one eye at this point. Normally I would start with an eye and say, oh, if I can get the one eye right, I'm, you can build your confidence in stages. If I can get the one eye right, I can proceed. And in this case, I want to do the skin first. If I can get the skin starting right, I can then proceed. So with that, I leave some room for the art as I'm doing it to try and inspire me on what needs to be done as it doesn't verbally speak to me, but you have, have it present things to you that you can then decide to continue and to accept it, what it's doing, or you can modify it if necessary. But sometimes the art itself, as you're doing it, will speak to you. I now have the hair in this shadow area um, almost done. And this is an example of the balance between the shape that you can see in here. This very large shadow has a shape here. And there's another shape here. And then a balance with actual hairs. This is a pattern of hairs. All right, let's take a look. See what I mean? There's a um, clump of hair in the darkest area on the lower right is the darkest. It turns out um, that's actually the most challenging cause area to do because if you think of it, that looks green. And I did use green in that area. But this is the scariest area, really. So for me to start with the scariest area, I can now relax a little bit now that that's done. And I can do the lighter blonde areas. So it's important to find the shapes. There's one here, there's a triangle with a hair going through it. It's important to get those shapes in. I'm working on this one now. You see this shape here? Here's the set of sides of hairs crossing over other hair. I found it best, you've got to, as you do the hair, you've got to reserve that in advance and make places where hairs intersect each other, where you want to show them well, that there's intersection going on. And I'll clean that up later. Here's that hair going through this shape. This is not even done yet where I need to do some crossover. Here's a crossover. Here's another one. You've got to intentionally set some aside. And then even if you have just a few in this whole area, let's say you had 10 areas where there was an obvious crossing over of hairs like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You're probably going to need 15 to 20 crossings in this area. And that would be enough that your mind, the viewer would say, oh, that's hair crossing over other hairs, like this one. This one could be extended. You can also do extend, extend it later and maybe emphasize it. Where longer animal hair, you have to do it. This is very long human hair, you just have to do it and just set it aside like that. Shorter, real short human hair or short animal hair, you don't have that problem to worry about as much. You might just need to do it in like two places of this whole area because the short hairs aren't going to cross each other. The other thing I bought at the store was some pencils that I use commonly. I needed one badly. That raw umber comes in handy. And I'm down to a little pencil nub and a pencil holder that are nice to save pencils. But that's getting so small. I picked some other colors that I'm running low on. And that one I desperately needed. wanted to try that one. So that was good to get. Got some more paper. I'm going to try and do... One a month, 
and get back to my goal of two a month videos. This one was very low tech. I did not even bother putting up the uh, tripod thing for this camera and just kept it as simple as possible today. Anyway, you have a good one. I will talk to you in the next one. All right. Bye.